friends, welcome to Origin Fertility and IVF. I am Dr. Rashmi Sharma and in the today's uh, video, we will discuss about laser assisted hatching. But before that, if you wish to come to our center, you can see the number below on the screen. You can give a phone call and come to any of our center in Delhi. Or if you wish to consult online, we will give you the description, uh, we will give you the link of the app in the description box below and you can consult us online as well. Okay. So coming to the topic of the video today, which is laser assisted hatching, what it is, why it is done, in which patients it can benefit, does it increase the IVF success rate and are there any side effects of laser assisted hatching? These are the questions that I would try to answer in this video. Before, uh, you know, coming, actually coming to the laser assisted hatching, we have to understand how a normal conception happens. So we know normally every lady forms an egg and that egg follicle, you know, that follicle ruptures around mid cycle and an egg enters into tube and the sperm, they travel from the vagina to the fallopian tube and fertilization between the egg and the sperm takes place in the tube and in the tube, the embryo, the developing embryo develops for five days. The fifth day embryo is called as blastocyst. Okay. So that blastocyst is, is, is the embryo in which there is an outer covering. It is exactly like any other animal's egg, like hen or, you know, uh, uh, the, the animals uh, in which the babies hatch out of egg. So human baby also hatches like that. So from the shell of the embryo, the, em the shell breaks and the blastocyst, you know, it comes out of the shell of the egg, which is a hatching blastocyst. And that blastocyst and then has to implant in the uterus. This is normally how a pregnancy happens or how conception happens. So one of the theories of the IVF failures, one of the hypotheses uh, is that maybe some of the IVFs fail because the embryo failed to hatch out of its shell. Maybe the shell was hard and that is why the embryo was good enough but it couldn't break the shell of the embryo. Okay. So based on this hypothesis, the scientists thought that maybe if we find some way to weaken the shell of the embryo, maybe we would be able to increase the IVF implantation rate or the success rate. Okay. Thus came the thinking of assisted hatching. So we are assisting the embryo in hatching out of its shell. And for that, uh, assisted hatching, three methods developed. The initial one was the chemical hatching. So with the help of acid thyroid solution, the scientists used to apply that acid thyroid at one point of the shell so that from that area, due to the activity of the chemical, the shell used to weaken. That was, that was chemical hatching. The other method was mechanical hatching in which in the microscope, with the help of the needle, uh, the scientists used to fiddle with the shell of the embryo in the hope to weaken the shell of the embryo. And the latest and the most advanced is through the laser with the help of laser. So laser is a wonderful energy source which is very targeted, very specific and you know the, um, it can lead to just minimum, uh, minimum breakage of the shell whatever we want. So with the help of laser the scientists try to make a hole in the shell of the embryo. Sometimes they make a full hole, sometimes they kind of just slice the shell so that the shell weakens and we hope when the embryo is ready to hatch, it will be easy for the embryo to hatch. So this is what is laser assisted hatching. Okay. Now comes the question, in which patients uh, laser assisted hatching is useful? So and if it is so useful, then why it is not done in every patient? Why? I mean, it should be done for every IV patient. But no, it is not to be done for every IV patient. The research till now regarding laser-assisted hatching is very unclear. Unclear in the sense we are not sure whether it actually helps. So a lot of researches when we do meta-analysis have shown that in certain patients, yes, laser hatching can help to improve the success rate. And those patients are number one. If the lady is of higher age group, number two, if we are doing a frozen embryo transfer, because it is thought that maybe because of the process of freezing or vitrification, the shell of the uh, embryo, which is uh, in medical language, we call it a zona pellucida, and sometimes only zona, 
you know it kind of hardens the third type of patients may be uh, in which there have been uh, cycles of multiple IVF failures and the fourth type of patients uh, may be even in the fresh cycle if the embryologist or if the lab scientist feels that the zona or the outer shell of the embryo seems to be too thick so sometimes my embryologist tells me madam uh, this embryo you know this these have thick zona so i'll do laser hatching even during the fresh ivf okay so these are the uh, mainly you know literature wise these are the four indications in which laser assisted hatching is supposed to help now comes the question does uh, laser hatching improves IVF success rate. So as I said, the research is not very clear and it is still inconclusive. Only in certain type of patients, like I have told before, if the lady is of high age, if the embryos are frozen embryos, if the zona seems to be thick to the embryologist, or if there is a history of multiple IVF failures. In these patients, yes, uh, there is some evidence from the studies to suggest that maybe laser hatching can uh, help to improve the IVF success rate. Coming to the cost of the laser hatching. So laser is a very expensive piece of equipment. It needs a you know, huge investment from the side of the IVF clinic and uh, maintenance costs are there. And also the embryologists have to be really proficient in doing the laser assisted hatching. So, uh, and, and, and the laser is not available at all the centers, only the advanced uh, labs, you know, who are doing all kinds of advanced procedures like pre-implantation genetic testing, uh, they will be having laser. So approximate cost of laser assisted hatching in our lab, in our center is around 10,000 rupees for one patient. Now coming to whether laser assisted hatching can actually have some harm. So uh, more or less uh, laser assisted hatching, uh, we don't know whether benefits are there or not, but harms are not there. There are some studies to suggest that maybe because of the use of laser assisted hatching, the incidence of monozygotic twins or identical twins may increase. You know, you can, identical twins are twins, uh, which we know they form from one single embryo. So there was just one individual, one embryo, which somehow got divided into two. Okay, so these two uh, twins are exact clone copy of each other. So they share the same DNA and they're exactly same twins. Okay, that is identical twins or monozygotic twins. So, uh, you know, it is thought that because uh, the shell has weakened, there are some cracks in the shell. So when the embryo is hatching out of the shell, so maybe uh, those cracks, you know, they kind of, uh, kind of uh, break the embryo into two. And that's why maybe laser hatching is increasing the incidence of uh, monogenetic twins or identical twins. There are some very latest research which uh, suggests that no, laser hatching does not increase identical twin rate. Maybe it is the extended culture in the lab. So that is these days, you know, we have started culturing the embryos till day four, day five. So extended culture till blastocyst stage maybe is responsible for increase in the identical twinning rate. So we are not sure. And, you know, it looks like that, you know, even if it's an identical drill, what is the problem? You know, some people will be even happy. Some couples will be happy with the, uh, because they want to have twins. But no, identical twins, actually, this pregnancy can have a lot of complications. It is not so simple. I mean, of course, as compared to a single twin pregnancy or as compared to even a normal twin pregnancy, in which the embryos have come from two different embryos, the monogenetic preg pregnancy carries its own complications. So it's not a desirable situation, but yes, sometimes it does happen. We are not sure whether it happens because of laser hatching. We are not yet sure. So in cases uh, where laser hatching is indicated, it should be done, but it should not be done unnecessarily, you know, because we're not sure of its benefit. So it should not be done unnecessarily. It should be reserved only for cases where it is indicated. So I hope uh, this video must have uh, taught you something, must have cleared some of your doubts about laser assisted hatching. If you have some questions, you can write down below in the comment section. And we uh, at our channel, we always have a live session of question and answer on every Tuesday uh, between 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Indian time. So, uh, you know, we try to take up these questions during those live sessions. Thank you so much.